Also, we have devotionals uh, for Lent. They are in the back of the church on a, on a table back there. Very well done. Uh, please do pick up a devotional and make use of that. And I think as most of you have heard already, we uh, have a new office administrator. Uh, her name is Debbie Miller. She is now in the office with Carol. Carol is graciously showing her all the ropes. Uh, but do stop in and, and, uh, and be sure to greet her. Let's see, two weeks from today, Sunday, March 23rd, uh, after the praise service, we want to have, ask people to stay around for a bit and have some conversation about the praise service. Uh, we want to talk about the service itself, ideas, suggestions, what goes good, what doesn't go good. Uh, that will be two weeks from today, uh, March 23rd. Also, Jana asked me to announce, uh, we do have a team signed up for this year's Coleman Race for the Cure. That's going to be in May. Uh, on Monday and Thursday evenings, people are meeting in the parking lot at 5.20 uh, to train. We're starting early. Some of us are going to take a long time to train for that. Uh, Monday and Thursday evenings, both walking, and for those who want to run, they can run. Uh, 5.20, and the focus being having a good group in the, uh, the Coleman race. And then finally, one correction in the bulletin. Uh, I think the bulletin says no Sunday school on the 30th. There will be Sunday school that day. We are going to change schedule on the 30th. Last Sunday of the month will be Sunday school at 9.30, uh, joint service at 10.30, and then a spaghetti dinner by the youth uh, after that. So again, a fun day. Please mark that. Oh, I think that's about all I know. Good to have you here. Let's uh, celebrate together in the grace of our Lord, and let's stand and sing our opening song.
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all <coughs> desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess together our sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins with which I have offended you, and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them, and repent of them, and pray for your boundless mercies. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake gives us all, forgives us all our sins. Through his Holy Spirit he cleanses us, and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God, who called us out of darkness into the splendor of his light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the light and love of God, who wonderfully made you, who graciously redeemed you, who calls you each by name, be with you all. And also with you. And pray with me. Heavenly Father, it is your glory always to have mercy. Bring back all who have erred and strayed from your ways. Lead them again to embrace in, tr in faith the truth of your word and to hold it fast. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand for the reading of this morning's gospel? The gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Today's gospel is the account of Jesus' baptism. In those days, Jesus came up from, Galilee, from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. We'll continue with the children's song. Can you help me with that? Just say what I'm saying. You say joy? Good. That's all you have to say is joy and love and life. It's real good. This is an old song that used to be a long time ago, so I'm not positive I can play it, but if I can't, can you take over for me? All right, what a guy. <laughs> We've read, 
it, that, well, that, oh, hang on to that question. Baptism, we pour water on people's heads and we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you make the cross. And you know what happens in baptism? God says, you're mine. God says, you belong to me. It's really cool when we get baptized. God says, you're part of my family and I'm going to love you forever. But I figured, let me show you what we use in baptism, okay? Get, well, we're going to have somebody escape here. Don't go too far. This, you know what we call this thing? Come on, let's take a look. Let me take a look below. This is, this is called the baptismal font. And we could actually call it the baptismal water hole. Because you know what it does? <laughs> it holds water. Yeah, the reason we have this is to hold the water and there's no water in it. Should we put water in it? When we have a baptism, we usually put the water in this nice little uh, glass container and we pour the water in. Now we got water. Now we can go back to this, right? What's that? Did I get wet? Well, that's okay. I think when we get baptized, we should celebrate. If people get a little bit wet, that's okay too, right? I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Well, you know what happens when we have a baptism? The people being baptized come up to the font. If they're a little one, their parents hold them. And if they're a big one, you can kind of put your head over the font. And then we pour water over their head and we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is really kind of cool. We pour the water on their head. And then you know what we do? We give them a little napkin. Because sometimes when people pour water over your head, you get water in your eyes. Do you like getting water in your eyes? Yeah. I don't either. And so we give them a napkin, and that way if you get water in your eyes, they can, they, can, they, can, uh, they can blot it out. So we have napkins up here. And then, when I do a baptism, I just put the water in my hand and pour it. I think that's probably the way John the Baptist did it. But some pastors like to have fancy seashells. Some pastors like to use seashells. It's not. This one's made out of gold. Some people that... No, I don't... Well, we can check. <laughs> I'm not sure if it is, but some pastors think it's fancier to put the water in a seashell and then pour it, and you get more water too, and, and pour that over their head. Okay, so sometimes, so you want to do that? Let's see. Ya. Pour it on my head. Okay, let's see if you can, okay, here we go. There you go. Do you know where we get the water for baptism? Um, the sink. Out of the sink. It's just ordinary water. You see what it means? What, what's that? Over back there, there's a sink. Yeah. And you know what? The reason we use ordinary water is because what makes baptism special is not the water, but God's promise. And when we pour the water, God says, I love you. And that's what makes it special. And sometimes we have a baptism too. We, we light a candle. We light a candle. Can I light? Can I, should I light it? Okay, we'll light a candle. Well, yeah, we don't want anybody to borrow a drop it because if you burn the church down, I get in trouble. There we go. But what happens when we do a baptism, we light, we light a candle. This is little Nicholas, can I have you hold that? And we give a candle to the parents or the sponsors. And when you guys were baptized, we should have given a parent a, a candle to you. And if you didn't, let me know and we'll give you a candle. Uh, we light a candle. It's kind of like with a birthday cake. We light candles to say, hey, a new life begins. In baptism, we light a candle to say something special happened here. And so we light candles to proclaim the new life that begins. But that's what happens. When we baptize, we pour water over people's heads. We make the sign of the cross on their forehead. And we put, use napkins to wipe off the water. And then we, uh, we light candles to say new life begins. All that's part of the baptism. And it's really cool because what happens is God says, you're mine and I love you. What if you put the candle in the water? I think the candle would probably go off. We wouldn't have a burning candle anymore. <laughs> yep. Oh, good. Let's try that. Nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the old-fashioned way and go. Oh. oh. <laughs> let's share a word of prayer, shall we? Holy oh, smoke. Let's, let's pray. But it's not this one. It just changed it. Yeah, it keeps going, doesn't it? Let's pray, shall we? Holy Jesus, thank you for the gift of baptism. Lord, thank you for eager minds to explore and wonder. Lord, remind us of all that you have done. And every time we do a baptism, let us celebrate in your eternal grace. Amen. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the help. And would you pray with me today? Holy God, we gather and give you thanks. We thank you for the, the inquisitiveness of children, for, for the ability to ask and wonder and to check out the faith. Lord, give us all that ability to look and to wonder and to grow. And Lord, we thank you for your gift of baptism. Teach us anew of all that you have done. 
Help us to live and walk in our baptismal covenants always. For in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. There are a lot of themes in our worship service today. It seems like there's a lot of threads running through the service. We're talking about baptism, and we're talking about an affirmation of baptism, and we're remembering Ash Wednesday, and we're talking about the first Sunday of Lent. It seems there's a lot of themes in our service for today. And what I'd like to do during the sermon is try to pull all those themes together. I think all those various threads come together very nicely, and we can tie them off very nicely. So let me spend some time and just see if we can pull all that together as we understand what we're about in worship this morning. To begin, this is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. Lent is the 40 days before Easter. It's a long, long tradition in the church. Uh, the, it goes from Ash Wednesday until Easter. And it's to be 40 days of, of, of penitence and reflection on the cross. It's kind of a serious time in the church here as we look and knew at all that God has done. It's meant to be a time of, of renewing ourselves in all that God has done. Now, there's a little quirk in the church's uh, liturgy, and that is Lent runs from uh, Ash Wednesday to Easter. If you count the days from Ash Wednesday to Easter, you very quickly see there's more than 40. There's more than 40. It's actually about 46 days in that period. And what the church has said is Sundays don't count. They really aren't part of Lent. In fact, the language the church has used is, is Sundays are in Lent but not of Lent. And what the church is trying to say is that Sundays are always to be a celebration of the goodness and the glory of Jesus Christ. That every Sunday we come together to celebrate God's victory in Christ. And so what I think that means for us is Wednesday nights we have to be real somber, and as we go through the, uh, go through the Lenten season, we certainly take time to focus anew on the cross of Christ. But Sundays we continue to celebrate because God is good. We need to make, um, maintain that message also. But we begin today, uh, uh, our Lenten, or actually we begin last Wednesday, our, our Lenten journey. Lent has always been tied in with baptism. Do you know that Lent has always been tied in with baptism? Lent actually began, the history is, uh, the early church tried to do its baptisms on Easter Sunday. The early church thought, what better day of the week, or what better day of the year to do our baptisms than Easter? And so they tried to do other baptisms on, on Easter. In fact, the, the Catholic Church still has some, uh, some, uh, some of this in their, uh, their liturgy. Uh, they try to do a lot of baptisms on the Saturday night before Easter. They call it the Vigil of Easter, uh, and it's a time they do a lot of baptism. It's, it's a baptizing. It's a reminder of the old tradition of baptizing on Easter. Well, what happened was, if you baptize on Easter, the period before Easter becomes a time of preparation for baptism, right? If you're parents and you're going to have your children baptized, it's a time for training parents. If you're an adult and you're going to be baptized, it's a time for training and instruction and shaping in the faith. And so the period before Easter became a time of intense focus in faith for those who are being baptized. Over the centuries, that has evolved into what we now call Lent. Uh, and it has become not just a time for those to be baptized, but a time for all of us uh, to intensely focus on our faith and look again at, at what God has done. It's a time for all of us to be renewed in, in faith. Uh, but Lent has also always maintained that baptismal emphasis. It, it, it's been a way of saying that as we seek to be renewed in faith, as we seek to grow in faith, we need to be grounded in God's gift in baptism, because that's where it all starts for us. And so that's why we're doing this service of, of affirmation of baptism on this first Sunday of Lent. It's a way of picking up this old tradition and saying that as we do our, our Lenten journeys, we do so as a Baptist people. Well, with that said, let me focus in on baptism a little bit. Uh, and I want to do so because I don't think we Lutheran preachers talk about baptism enough. And I'll hold myself in the midst of that camp. I think we, we don't spend enough time focusing on baptism. I mean, what a gift. What a wonder. What an absolute gift of faith. We believe that baptism is God's covenant, God's promise, God's gift for us. That in the mystery of water and the word, God says, you are mine. And all my promises are meant for you. That in water and the word, in this simple enough ceremony, God makes us part of his people. Now, baptisms look ordinary enough. I mean, it, it's not an extraordinary ceremony. We have some people come forward, we pour some water, we speak some words, we have a candle. I mean, it's nothing really out of the ordinary. 
But incredibly, in the midst of an ordinary ceremony, God does the spectacular. I think God has a habit of that. It is often in the ordinary that God does the spectacular. And that's true in baptism. That when we come up for baptism, God says, you're mine. You are mine. All my promises are meant for you. I promise that you are now part of my family. I will love you and care for you every day on this earth and into the new fullness of life to come. Baptism means that we belong to God. I think baptism also means that we respond to God. That because we are baptized people, we now respond to God. And there's a number of places that we do that. One, Lutherans have traditionally said that confirmation is a time when we, 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 uh, we reaffirm our baptism and we respond to God. And I think that's a good emphasis. Second, I think every day of our life is to be a response to being baptized. Every day in our life we walk wet, if you will, recognizing that God has claimed us and we live as his people. And third, on occasion, we take ceremonies like this, special services, to remind ourselves and rededicate ourselves to being a, being a baptized people. I think there's a nice analogy for what we're doing today in a renewal of wedding vows. You know, every now and then couples come and say they want to renew their wedding vows, and I have to say those services are always great fun. You know, people have been married for 25 or 30 years, and they want to do a renewal of vows, and the, uh, the service becomes uh, the time of remembrance when they remember their wedding. It becomes a time of rededication as they rededicate themselves to their spouse. And it becomes a, a time of celebration as they celebrate the relationship and, the, and the, often the family that they have. Those are special services. I think that's a good analogy for what we're doing today. We lift up baptism and we remember the fact that we are baptized. Now I know for many of us, we don't remember our actual baptism. We were carried by our parents and loved ones up to the font that happened before we could even remember it. But I also suspect that our parents and loved ones have told us stories that we know about our baptism. Today is a day to remember the fact that all of this has happened for us. Second, it's a day to rededicate ourselves to being baptized people. That as baptized people, we are called to live for Christ. And so we promise to do that anew. In fact, listen to the words of the service that we're going to do in just a few minutes. Some nice wording about what it means for us to be a baptized people. And third, third, it's a time to celebrate. We simply celebrate and say, God, you are good and gracious. And we thank you for that. All of that gets tied up in the service today. One more point in, uh, in our, our service for today. Uh, and, and that is, notice how today's service ties in with what we did on Ash Wednesday. Notice how today's service ties in uh, with what we did on Ash Wednesday. Lent again, last Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Uh, as part of our Ash Wednesday service, people came forward and put the sign of the cross on their forehead in dust. That's an old, old church tradition. It's, it's a reminder of the fact that we are sinners. By the way, we made the paper on that. We're kind of getting upscale, uh, upscale here. Uh, but there's an old, old tradition that we begin Lent with, with a remembrance of our sin. And so we come forward and we put ashes on the sign of the cross right on our forehead. And, and we say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Well, today, for the first Sunday of Lent, we come forward to the same altar. And we mark the same spot on our foreheads. Only this time we don't do it with dirt and ashes. We do it with baptismal water. And it's a way of saying that we who are sinners now belong to Christ and are forgiven in Christ. That what water does is it washes away ashes. And what baptism does is it washes away sin. And today is meant to be a reminder for those of us who are sinners. God has an incredible word, an incredible promise of forgiveness and newness and hope. And I think all of that gets caught up in our Lenten journey. We certainly remember that we are people of dust and ashes. We have sinned. We have failed. But even more, we remember that in our baptisms, God made promises to us that God does his best work among people who sin. And in the grace of Jesus Christ, we are reminded that we are children of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. That's the gift that God gives to us. And so, today we continue on with the Lenten journey. We remember we are sinners, of course. But even more, we remember God's grace. God's grace that gives us newness of life and hope. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing together our next song.
sisters and brothers in Christ, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Each day we are called to be Christ's disciples, to live within the context of our baptism, and to daily die to sin and rise to new life. I ask you, therefore, to once again reject sin, confess the faith of the Church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended into hell. hell. On the On third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers, I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May God, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and of his kingdom. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us in all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemn the wicked and save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that all who are baptized may live a new life. Wash away the sin of all of us and bring us forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'll invite those who would like to receive a reminder of baptism to come forward. We'll make the sign of the cross in your forehead in water. And I'll be repeating words that were spoken to you when you were baptized. You are a child of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Please come. Carol, you are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, marked by the cross of Christ forever. Like you are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, marked by the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God. You have been sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. And you are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, marked by the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit. You 
are the child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, you are the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God who can see in the Holy Spirit and mark with the cross forever. And you are a child of God. You have been marked with the cross of Jesus and sealed in his Holy Spirit forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. Here you are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. You are a child of God, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked from the cross of Christ forever. Brad, you are a child of God. You have been sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked from the cross of Christ forever. congregation please stand. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord and also with you. Please share the peace of the Lord with one another.